YouTube Frogs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time featuring the newest 4-star Animo character, our prodigy detective, Shikanoan Heizo. We'll be capturing his design breakdown, optimal build choices for weapons and artifacts, how constellations affect him, team comps, and a gameplay showcase. Footage in this video was captured on the media server, and any additional findings not covered in this video will be in the pinned comment. So don't forget to check that out and let me know what you think about Heizo. Let's dive right into it. So, how does this martial artist work? Heizo's base kit is an on-field attack scaling Animo DPS. As a Catalyst user, his value is greatly enhanced as an off-field DPS enabler, making his synergy very high for the well-known Taser comp. Contrary to Sucrose, who is the only other Animo Catalyst user, Heizo's kit primarily wants him to be on the field punching and kicking his way through his enemies, and secondarily grants supportive capabilities that most Animo users are known to have. His most flashy and highest damaging ability lies in his elemental skill. Heartstopper Strike. This ability has a passive called Declension, which stacks and coincides with this Ascension 1 passive. Every time that Heizo swirls, he gains one stack per 0.1 second. Stacks are visibly shown when he is on the field and remain even when he is off field. On tap, Heizo punches, consuming all of his Declension stacks. On hold, Heizo charges, gaining one stack every 0.75 seconds for a maximum of four stacks before punching, consuming all the stacks. If he has 4 stacks, this grants him the Conviction effect, which further increases his punch damage and has a wider AoE. His multipliers on this ability are quite impressive, ranging from 318.5% at level 6 with 0 stacks, to 318.5 plus 4 of these stacks, and then if he has 4 stacks, he gets also Conviction damage bonus, which grants him 796.2% at level 6 with 4 stacks and Conviction effect on. So anticipate damage per screenshot showcases of massive Heizo punches from this ability. This punch generates 2 to 3 Anima orbs depending on his number of stacks, and then maintains a 10 second cooldown. 3 orbs is guaranteed at 4 stacks of declension. Elemental Burst, Wind Muster Kick. Heizo launches an Anima Bomb, dealing AoE damage, and if it comes in contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, Electro, and fuses on each enemy and explodes, dealing additional AoE elemental damage. This can affect up to 4 enemies, and their infusions can explode, dealing damage to the entire group, leading to quadratic damage scaling. With a very low energy cost of 40 energy and a cooldown of 12 seconds, Heizo maintains a very cheap burst rotation and requires minimal energy. The damage is fairly decent at 440.6% and is maximized in AoE setting with Quadratic Eider's damage. So don't be fooled by this 30%, as this is maximized in an AoE setting and can affect multiple enemies simultaneously. Finally, his normal attack charge attack chain. So while Heizo's multipliers here are relatively average, he is an on-field Anemo DPSer and can swirl by a normal attacking courtesy of being a Catalyst user. Thus, his normal attack and charge attack chain becomes a very important part of his kit. It's responsible for additional attack scaling DPS alongside consistent swirls. His N1 to N3 are very quick hits. His N4 is a triple kick, and N5 is a roundhouse kick. Those aiming for longer on-field time, I would avoid N5's long duration, capping his normal attack rotation at his triple kick with a charge attack or a dash cancel. N4's triple kick is very important to use to guarantee a swirl reaction based off of internal cooldown rules or declension stacks. Talent priority, in my opinion, is pretty intuitive. Elemental skill, first higher multiplier of damage, then normal attack, charge attack, change, and elemental burst at your disposal. They're still both important though, so I'd recommend leveling all of his skills at least to 6 and then focusing on his elemental skill first. For all of his abilities, Heizo normal attacks very frequently, so this is important to level up. His burst is a mini nuke, and his elemental skill is that massive punch. Now for his passive abilities. We already covered his Ascension 1, which grants him declension stacks every time he swirls. His Ascension 4 includes that little bit of Elemental Mastery transfer we know Animo supports to have. After he uses his big punch move, he grants all party members except himself 80 Elemental Mastery for 10 seconds. His punch is on a 10 second cooldown, so this is 100% uptime. This is also the only utility part of his kit, and it's a flat buff, so you don't need to stress about maximizing his Elemental Mastery to make the most of his supportive utility. As a 4 star, it's reasonable to have a couple of constellations, so let's run through these before recommended builds. Constellation 1. When you swap him in, he gains 1 declension stack and 15% increased attack speed for 5 seconds. This is on a 10 second cooldown, basically speeding up his rotation to fire off a 4 stack punch faster. Constellation 2. His vacuum is a little stronger and lasts a little longer. Constellation 3 and 5. Elemental skill plus 3 and then elemental burst plus 3 respectively. 
Constellation 4. His burst in fusion, the explosion that happens after the initial bomb, refunds flat energy. 9 on the first, making his burst cost 31, and then 13.5 of all 4 proc, reducing it to 26.5. This Constellation 4 makes Hazo's Burst the lowest effective energy cost burst in the game. Highly incentivized to make sure at least one enemy has an element to be infused for at least that 9 flat energy. And then finally, Constellation 6. His elemental skill gains 16 crit rate and 32 crit damage at max stacks. If it's not at max stacks, then it only gets 4 crit rate per stack, no crit damage bonus. This is basically for big booms. Honestly, I personally like Hazo's Constellations. Nothing is super broken. They fit directly into his playstyle, and everything is moderately useful. You get attack speed in one stack to start from Constellation 1, better AoE grouping from Constellation 2, 30 or lower burst energy cost from Constellation 4, and then punch crit damage from Constellation 6. So, a grand overview at Constellation 0 shows Heizo as a straightforward Animo DPS with Swirl Synergy, allowing for either a dedicated DPS build or a raw Elemental Mastery Swirl based build or a mix in between. Dedicated DPS builds will be more favored in single target scenarios where fewer swirls occur. Raw Elemental Mastery Swirl based builds will be more favored in AoE settings where swirls are constantly being procced. Either build is going to allow Heizo to output a sizable amount of damage while also allowing his off-field supports to capitalize on his constant Viridus Inventor debuff application and swirls. Since Viridus Inventor is generally a pretty restrictive artifact set to farm for, whatever you have that supports Anemo and swirl damage will work. Let's go over what I would recommend as a solid build. So, weapons. Weapons for a standard DPS build are just looking to improve his attack, crit, Anemo, and elemental skill based damage. Weapons for a typical Elemental Mastery build are just looking for Elemental Mastery, and then Raw Attack and Nemo for the extra DPS. His recharge requirement is extremely low, with his burst only at 40 cost, especially with Constellation 4 with 30 cost, so recharge should be avoided altogether on the weapons. That being said, Pavonius Weapon gets a special mention though, for obvious team utility reasons if you need it. Are there any budget 3 star options? For the Elemental Mastery builds, we have Emerald Orb and the Magic Guide. They both provide Elemental Mastery secondary stat, and both have passives that are very easy to activate and maintain for Heizo. So what about Thrilling Tales then? If you want to relegate your Heizo to a standard Baton Pass debuffer, go for it. For the teams that he optimizes well for though, Thrilling Tales will not prove that valuable since he's the one on field most of the time, and the off field supports may not have snapshotable burst to make use of that 48% attack. Alright, what about 4 piece options? For standard DPS build, we have Solar Pearl and we have Witsith. Witsith is going to be an easy choice for a lot of players since, unlike other Catalyst users, Anemo Catalysts benefit from all 3 buffs for the raw damage from attack and elemental damage or swirls for the elemental mastery. For EM build, Sacrificial Fragments and the Mapa Mare are both viable options. I would prefer the Sacrificial Fragments here and aim for 4 stack punches even if it's reset immediately. And as we mentioned, Pavonius Codex is always an option if you're on the DPS build and want some extra team utility. Heizo himself will permanently have his burst up with this weapon, given the immense amount of recharge and also the particle generation. Alright, 5 star options? Well, we don't have an Elemental Mastery based catalyst, so every option here is just for raw DPS stats. In my opinion, his best strict DPS choice is the Skyward Atlas. It's maximized base attack, attack percent secondary, elemental damage bonus passive, and the additional passive damage will always be active since Heizo will be normal attacking very frequently. When using this weapon, the crit will come from artifact substats and, if you have it, Constellation 6 for his punch crit damage. This then leads to his other DPS choices, which, unironically, Memory of Dust will hold its ground. As an on-fielder, Memory of Dust's passive will always be capped for Hazo's personal damage. Shielding is not even necessary to gain a lot of value from this weapon, but feel free to add one for more stat gains. These two attack percent weapons, the Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust, will provide the strongest raw damage increase for Heizo, since the crit will be coming from Artifacts and Constellation 6. Otherwise, we have Lost Prayer and Kagura's Verity. They will prove comfortably strong to use. Kagura's will only be able to maintain one stack of its passive at a time though, and Lost Prayer unfortunately takes 12 seconds to reach max power, so they both won't be at full power for most of Heizo's rotations. These are still easy weapons to build around though, given their high crit rate stats. 33 crit here and 66 crit damage here. So, my personal recommendations for his weapons. I would go Skyward Atlas or Witsith R5 as main priorities, and then Memory of Dust, and then any 5 star weapon. After that, we have Solar Pearl, and then Sacrificial Fragments, and then any 4 star weapons. For shorter duration fights where Hazel can close things out with just a couple of punches, Witsith R5 will nuke the hardest. 
Now, let's get into artifact setups. Being an Anemo character that utilizes swirls makes things super simple. 4-piece Beard Eyes and Venera. The only struggle with this is farming proper pieces with half-decent substats, since that can take ages. If you don't have 4-piece VV though, you can make do with one of these options. We have 2-piece Viridescent Venera with 2-piece Wanderers for the 80 Elemental Mastery, or we have 2-piece Viridescent with 2-piece Attack Percent, which can come from Gladiator, Shimanawas, or Echo Set for 18% attack. The Wanderers is more for Swirl based, and the Attack Percent is more for his personal damage. For the early game players, 4-piece Instructor will be your best friend for that easy access Elemental Mastery for both Heizo and for the team. If you don't care about the team's support damage and only want Heizo to punch the hardest, 2-piece Viridescent and 2-piece Attack Percent is the go-to for a main DPS, one-punch man Heizo build. If you want to try infinite punch Heizo, 4-piece Thundering Fury also works but only reliable against a group of mobs. Heizo needs to be the one triggering the Electro Charge reaction, and this is most easily achieved against groups of enemies scrolling both the Hydro and Electro Auras on them simultaneously. Alright, on to main stat choices. So from what I've played around with, Heizo is incredibly flexible on builds. Any combination of attack, crit, anemo, and elemental mastery works, so use whatever you can get your hands on with the Beard as Venner set. I would advise that if you are going to go standard DPS, I would commit to the goblet and the mask as anemo damage and crit. Otherwise, aim to run triple elemental mastery for maximized swirls. Do remember though, swirls cannot crit and they are unaffected by attack and anemo damage. They are only affected by level. And elemental mastery does not affect any damage that crits. These two can coexist as stats, but the damage that they each contribute to is separate. The hard thing about this is that both swirl damage and anemo damage look really similar in color, so it's hard to tell the difference a lot of the time. And as mentioned before, standard DPS favors single target damage and then triple elemental mastery swirls favors AoE. This should be intuitive and you should take this into consideration for your team comp and what it optimizes against. So here's my overall conclusion for Heizo main stat build layouts. We have attack, anemo, and crit. This is the standard crit DPS build. Then we have the elemental mastery, anemo, and crit build, which is a standard mixed swirl plus crit DPS build. The crit comes from the Nemo Goblet and the Crit Mask and the Elemental Mastery from the Timepiece where we forego the attack percent. Then we have the Max Swirl build, which is best in an AoE setting, which is triple Elemental Mastery across the board. Then we have a Mixed, which is maximizing Swirl damage, but adding in raw Anemo damage, which is no crits. This is Elemental Mastery Timepiece, Anemo Goblet, and Elemental Mastery Mask. The recharge requirement for these builds is near 0 to 20%. Constellation 4 brings this to near 0 because you will almost never have a problem. So, minimal stat recommendations then. For the DPS build, I'd recommend 120% attack or higher. If you're running Scoured Atlas or Memory of Dust, you'll guarantee at least 140%. And then 60% crit rate, 120% crit damage. This will be 75% and 150% if you do have Constellation 6, it just won't show in the stat page. And then for the Swirl build, above 600 Elemental Mastery. You'll easily get above 800 if you have Sacrificial Fragments and you also have substats on your Flower and Feather. Now for these build layouts, they are just default examples. Beardus and Venera is really difficult to farm for. Prioritize the best artifacts that you have. Any combo of attack, anemo, and elemental mastery is okay. If you do aim for crit on the mask, go all in on it. The closer you are to 90% crit and 180 crit damage or higher, the better for consistency. Personally, I'll be running attack, anemo, and crit to maximize his huge punch numbers. And then my stats currently look like this without Constellation 6. So notice that if I had Constellation 6, this would be plus 16 crit rate and plus 32 crit damage, which would be about 80 to 180. So, how do team comps look? For Heizo, most compositions that Sucrose enables, Heizo will fit right in. I think the only one where he might need a bit of testing to verify is the Sukokomon comp. Comps like Electro Charge Taser, National, and Double Hydro will maximize the effectiveness of Heizo's swirl or damage-oriented builds. For Taser, expect C6 Fischl to always be part of this team since Heizo is a frequent normal attacker and C6 Fischl is one of the best support synergies for normal attack type characters. Apply an off-field Hydra like Yellen or Xing Chiu here and the core comp is complete. Last slot will likely be another Electro like Beta or Cookie to enable resonance, or you can drop in Bennett for the on-field attack transfer for Heizo. Four slot Beto allows this team to tackle AoE much better. This composition is super comfortable. Hazel will simply be punching and kicking and dashing while his team army of off-fields burst shreds the enemy. For healing, Xing Xiao's rain swords tends to be enough. For Mono Hydro, this is simply Hazel plus Yelan and Xing Xiao. Hazel literally becomes Gilgamesh with his army of Hydro swords doing his own thing and debuffing enemies to take massive amounts of Hydro damage. 
This comp is more suitable for single target enemies as Yellow and Chincho's burst target one enemy. Force Lock can be offensive like Bennett, Glass Cannon like Fischl or Beidou as another off-field DPS and adding Electro Charge, or Protective like Zhongli. For national comp, it's as you would expect. We have Bennett, Xiaoling, plus Xingxiu or Yelan, and then Heizou. Heizou is simply the ball carrier that holds Xiaoling's burst for infinite vaporizes against single target or groups of enemies. From my testing, this composition by default does suffer pretty heavily from recharge problems, so I actually opt for Favonius Codex on Heizou instead of a DPS book like Atlas. The team's rotation time is substantially more beneficial, especially since Heizou is like 60 to 75% on field here, so he gets a lot of Favonius Codex procs. Bennett will supply the attack that Heizou loses, running a utility book. And then finally, for Heizou's own personal damage, you can view him like Xiao. Double Geo Resonance with Bennett for maximized anemo oriented DPS. Since Heizo normal attacks quite a bit, Yunjin plus Zhongli makes a great Geo pair for this team comp. And finally, here's a damage per screenshot composition to maximize Heizo's punch damage. This comp is a little expensive since Jean's requirement is high constellation. Jean constellation 4 plus for the 40% anemo res decrease, and she can also hold Freedom Sworn Weapon. Mona for her burst omen damage increase, and she can also hold Tenacity and Thrilling Tails. And then Bennett for the burst attack transfer and as a noblesse holder. So, these are currently my Comfort Heizo team recommendations. Any additional findings from the community will be updated in the pinned comment. Since Heizo is an Anemo Catalyst user, it will generally gravitate towards Elemental Swirl comps for maximum viability. Now for a little bit of in-game playtesting, featuring some of the Heizo compositions we just went over. For Heizo's playstyle, I recommend keeping note of two things. First is his declension stacks for his elemental skill. I'd only use it at 4 stacks, and there's a slight audio cue when you do get 4 stacks. Just keep watch of the aura around him. And second thing is making sure that enemies have an element to infuse for his burst. With Constellation 4, this guarantees that his burst cost 30 or less. Besides that, I find that his attack rotations to vary depending on dash opportunities and enemy animations. For these gameplay tests, my Hazel will be running a standard DPS build with 4-piece Virodes and Venerer, and running Attack, Anemo, and Crit Rate main stat pieces. For Taser and Double Hydra, I'll be running Skyward Atlas, and then for the National Hazo, I'll be running Favonius Codex to assist with energy generation. This is Constellation Zero, with the base talent of level 6 for at all stats. Cue the music, Mr. Cope.
So, what do I think about Heizo? He adds a little bit of that fighting game spirit. He's a different twist to the usual elemental mastery buffers that we see from Animo supportive characters. He has strong standalone multipliers and his constellations are selfish buffs. I find his playstyle simple and intuitive and fits a lot of versatile roles depending on what you want to utilize. His build path is also super flexible besides the 4 piece Viridus and Venerum. At least he isn't that picky for the main stats on that set as long as they assist general DPS or swirls. And even if you don't have the investment to make him punch really hard, as an Animo Catalyst user, he can always be a Thrilling Tales 4-piece Viridescent Venera bot. And that about wraps up the Hato Guide. Any additional findings or updates will be in the pinned comment. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all Hazo Wanters become Hazo Havers. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to like if you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Take care.